The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Cheryl, and I'm joined today by Gino, as per usual. And today we're going to be discussing the QLXD Digital Wireless System, our newest wireless system. But before we jump into the presentation, just a few items of housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded and will be available several days after the presentation at shore.com slash training. So if you miss something or you want to re-review or you want to direct a friend or colleague to it, you can go to shore.com slash training. We keep all of our old webinars archived there and there's a great great wealth of information there on lots of different topics so you know feel free to peruse if you've got some time you can learn a lot uh, sure.com slash training and then second of all as we go through the webinar today if you have any questions please feel free to type them in the question pane in your right hand corner of your screen you should see a little a little sort of um, window with a question section if you can't see it you might see a little orange box with an arrow in it click on that that'll maximize that screen Feel free to answer any questions as we go along, and we will get to as many of those as we can at the very end of the presentation. So that wraps up all the housekeeping. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Gino, take it away. All right, Cheryl, thanks a lot. And thanks to everyone for joining us here this afternoon to learn about the QLXD digital wireless microphone system, our newest in a, in a parade of wireless microphone systems that we've been putting out lately. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've really kind of um, taken the opportunity to uh, turn over uh, just about our entire wireless line here and the QLXD is the latest the latest edition of that. So let's uh, let's get right into it here. Uh, QLXD is really kind of aimed at the the mid-tier user uh, really for for all types of events and installations, be it you know houses of worship or conference rooms and meeting rooms or you know mid-tier touring level bands or even sound companies rental the, the whole gamut of it it's, it's just a really powerful good sounding straight up wireless microphone system that has a lot of a lot of really cool features when we talk about mid-tier that that i mean could actually mean different things to different people i guess but maybe it'll be helpful to actually kind of look at where we think this slots into the sure product line up here so before getting specifically to qlxd if we were to look at what we consider the the mid-tier sort of mid-price part of the sure product line even even within the mid-tier there are several different products kind of going from the lower mid-tier to the upper mid-tier i guess you would say that you know right at this point constitutes slx ulx and then the ulxd digital wireless microphone system and of these ulx is the oldest uh it's the oldest wireless mic system sure has period it actually came out in 2002 so it's been around for quite a while it was quite revolutionary when it came out it had a lot of uh, a lot of firsts for sure wireless systems in it it had a really at the time with the auto really wide tuning bandwidth of 36 megahertz tunable in 25 kilohertz increments it had a scan feature which was like wow look at that the receiver will find a clear frequency for you yeah pretty cool huh <laughs> um, so that was new and it also featured audio reference companding which was uh the probably the uh the the the, the last evolution in sound quality for an analog system you know where you had to have companding in there to make it sound good uh, you know the ulx that, that audio reference companding really kind of kind of took it to about about the highest level you could get so for its day it was just a, a really good sounding wireless with some cool features and a lot of flexibility but in the intervening years uh, lots of new stuff has come out including the ulxd system pictured at the bottom there now you might think that well that's the digital version of ULX and that would just replace the original ULX uh, you would think but as it turns out uh, you know the during the the development of ULXD more and more cool features started getting rolled into it and it was oh it can do this and now it can do this and ooh, it can do this and and all those cool things it can do are awesome but of course that doesn't come for free so price point wise it ended up being a little bit more money than ULX so it wasn't really a direct replacement for ULX it was more the digital was more of a of a slight uh, step up the way ladder, I guess you might say, uh, in terms of both price and features and as well as performance. So QLXD is actually what's going to be replacing the ULX professional series of, of wireless mic systems. So now we've got a true replacement for it at approximately the same price point, maybe just slightly higher. But I think you'll see as we go through this, um, a lot of cool new features um and uh, but also a lot of similarities to ulxd as well so we'll kind of be referencing both of those systems as we go through this we'll be talking a lot about uh, the similarities between qlxd and ulxd as well as some of the differences uh, uh, and also how you, you qlxd sorry i'm 
getting my letters jumbled up here. QLXD um, is is a uh, is better than ULX analog and. I don't know, just about almost every way I think it possibly could be. But, uh, well, I'll let you judge for yourself, I guess, when we get to the end of things here. So what do we get with QLXD digital wireless? You get a really great sounding wireless mic system, uh, exceptional digital audio clarity. And that, you know, I, you know, I'd be the last person to be telling people, oh, it sounds better because it's digital, but it does sound better. Not And the digital technology that's used is what allows us to be able to do that in a wireless microphone system. It's very spectrally efficient. We'll talk about what that means in a minute here. It has networking. So again, talking about comparing it to ULX analog that didn't have networking, QLXD does. We'll see how that applies to the system in a little bit here. Of course, it's built to the same sure ruggedness standard. That's just kind of a given whenever we roll out a new product is, yes, you know, we've beat it up and dropped it and sweat on it and done everything else that we do to make sure that it's rugged. And it also offers encryption as well because security and wireless transmission is becoming a bigger and, and bigger deal. And you're starting to see that feature in more of our systems now. So starting first of all with the the audio quality, I mean, again, it's, you know, it's a little bit hard to talk about this in a webinar. I can't really play a sample of it for you over the webinar that would be meaningful by the time it goes through all the, you know, codecs and compression and everything else that happens and comes out your computer speakers. It probably wouldn't be very illustrative of anything. So you'll, you'll just have to take my word for it right now that it's a really good sounding wireless mic system. In fact, if you're familiar at all with ULXD, it's identical. It's the same audio circuitry. In fact, the audio and RF performance of QLXD and ULXD are pretty much identical. So again, it's 24-bit digital audio with 20 to 20 kilohertz flat frequency response, of course, depending on what microphone is connected to it. And that that's something that's just simply not achievable with an analog wireless mic system. Anytime you're using FM analog modulation, you can get a pretty good sounding wireless mic. I don't certainly don't want to disparage the storied history of sure analog wireless mic systems, but to get 20 to 20 kilohertz flat frequency response, there's not a, an analog system that can do that. And the fact that you don't have a compander in there kind of adding other artifacts to the signal is is huge. It pretty much sounds like a wired mic. The, the wireless system itself does not impart any sort of characteristic on it. And uh, with 120 dB of dynamic range, again, that that's, that's, that's far exceeds any other analog wireless mic system, which is really only about 100 dB. So you're, you're, you're picking up some additional dynamic range there as well. So again, sound quality is subjective. I encourage you to check these out for yourself and give them a listen. But I think in any sort of direct AB comparison, um, you would, you would, it wouldn't be a subtle difference. You would definitely say, oh, wow, that really does sound better. The spectral efficiency is uh, is a really big deal right now just because of as i'm sure many of you are aware the the spectrum crunch we've been in which is really nothing new it's it's been ongoing for for many years and now we're you know facing the possibility of maybe more auctions and repacking and you know given all the uncertainty in the in the uhf television spectrum one of the best ways to sort of future proof yourself is to buy a wireless mic system that is very spectrally efficient and by that i mean allowing you to use a large number of channels of wireless frequencies in this in a small amount of available spectrum it's it's not like the old days where we pretty much had the run of uhf and could spread frequencies out all over the place it's getting harder and harder to find open channels and and again the more wireless you can you can cram into those open channels the better better off you'll be with QLXD, again, it's a 64 megahertz tuning bandwidth, which is more than 10 TV channels of tuning bandwidth uh, in the United States, at least, where we have 6 megahertz wide TV channels. And up to 60 compatible systems per frequency band. Now, that's, you know, assuming there's no other conflicting signals on the air, but a uh, pretty good number there. And it, sa it says up to 129 using multiple bands. Again, that's, you know somewhat a uh, theoretical number because in honest, honestly, most people would probably run out of money before they ran out of frequencies on, on QLXD. Speaking of the spectrum crunch, I'll just mention this too. That was last month's topic was what's going on in the UHF television spectrum. So of course that webinar is archived. Sure.com slash training. Thank you. Uh, so you can go there and look for that if you want to uh, learn more about that. We don't want to, we don't want to bog down this topic with too much information on that, but you can learn more about it if you need to. I think it's worth taking just a quick look at here at what we're actually talking about when we say a wireless mic system is more spectrally efficient. And some of that has to do with the fact that it's digital, and a lot of it just has to do with improvements in transmitter linearity and the design of things as we get, you know, 
get better and better at doing this. So if you look at the spectrum analyzer screenshot on the left, what you're actually seeing there is two transmitters turned on, typical analog UHF wireless mic transmitters. And the, the two frequencies that they're broadcasting on are labeled by the numbers one and number two. So those are actual transmitters showing the frequency and amplitude of those signals. When you look at the other peaks that are shown on this analyzer screenshot there, those are what are called the intermodulation products that are the result of those two transmitters interacting with each other. Actually, in the, those products are generated in the hardware and they're actual frequencies that are now occupied by these intermod products. So even though there's only two transmitters on the air, if we were to need to pick a frequency for a third wireless mic system is actually one, two, three, four, five, six frequencies we would need to avoid. There's actually maybe even more than that if we widened out a little bit or took other types of products in mind, but there's at least six frequencies we need to avoid. And then once we have a frequency for that third transmitter, we have exponentially more intermods that we would then need to avoid to add a fourth transmitter in. So all these intermodulation products are what reduce the number of compatible frequencies you can get on the air. But a digital system like QLXD, which is not only digital, but exceptionally linear as well, the intermodulation products are, they're, they're still there. You can't eliminate intermods entirely, but they're so low, they're back basically in the RF noise floor and be, can be disregarded for frequency coordination purposes. Um, we might still consider them a little bit, but at a much lower level than you would have to on the analog system on the left. So the end result of all of that is you can get more frequencies on the air because you don't have to consider intermods as much as you would an analog system. And also the digital nature of the transmission allows you to space the frequencies closer together as well. They don't have to be as far apart because of the way the digital modulation works. So that ends up looking something like this where we're showing 14 QLXD transmitters on the air within a six megahertz bandwidth. Um, to, to actually, to be full disclosure, these are actually ULXD transmitters, but again, the RF performance is the same on the two. So again, the intermods are 55 dB below the carrier frequency, so they don't really need to be considered. Pack these frequencies up and you get a lot of wireless channels in a small amount of spectrum. How many actually? Well, ULXD and QLXD can both do 17 wireless mic frequencies in a single six megahertz TV channel. That's more than double, way more than double than what you could do with the ULX professional system that QLXD is replacing. And just for comparison's sake, you can see what the Sennheiser Evolution does and the AKG system I put in there because that's also a digital system, so a little bit more apples to apples. Um, we still come out looking pretty good there. And the great thing about that is, I mean, 17 wireless mics, particularly for the price point the QLXD system is is at, I mean, that's more wireless mics than most customers at that price tier are going to need anyway. So in a worst case scenario where you're only faced with one open TV channel left, you would still be able to get a fairly significant number of wireless mics on the air in that one TV channel. If you're doing five, 10, 12 wireless mics and you only have one TV channel, absolutely no problem getting there with QLXD. So that's a really, it's a, it's a, it, it, that's a feature that can't be undermined or, or undervalued with a product like this. And, and that's really the number you want to be looking at. You know, earlier I quoted the, well, you can do 60 channels in a single frequency band. But again, that's assuming that, you know, you've got that whole frequency band available, which doesn't happen unless you're in, you know, the wilds of Montana or Wyoming or something like that. There's going to be some TV channels occupied that's going to prevent you from getting that 60. So even when you're cross shopping to different manufacturers, this is the number you want to be looking at, not the total you can do across the entire band because you're, you're never going to have that whole band available. We give you all those frequencies, but we also make it easy for you to set up and use the system too, right? We give you, if we're going to give you thousands of frequencies, you better have some way to figure out which one is the best one to use. So just like going all the way back to ULX, the system does have automatic channel scan to find a clear frequency for you. Uh, we also have now the IR synchronization, which is something ULX didn't have, but just about every wireless since then does have, except for BLX, I think, which is the ability to use IR sync to get the transmitter program up to the same frequency and something called networked channel scan, which we're going to look at a little bit more in just a couple of minutes here. Because networking is another big important feature of the QLXD. Again, it, this is the uh, most affordable wireless system we've ever had with built-in Ethernet networking on it. You used to have to go to at least ULXD to get that, and now you can get it on QLXD. Why do you care about Ethernet 
connectivity? Uh, well, it gives you a uh, uh, ability to communicate with control systems like AMX or Crestron for remote control from your touchscreen, your room control system. It allows you to use wireless workbench six with the QLXD system um, as well, not only for coordinating frequencies, but also for doing scans as well. That's one of the most powerful ways to use wireless workbench six is to actually connect it to a sure a network receiver use that receiver to do a scan and then use that information to coordinate frequencies for your wireless systems. Um, and again, you can do that now with QLXD. So for you wireless workbench junkies who are already out there, just know that QLXD supports it. If you haven't used wireless workbench yet, it's a free download from the Sure website. So you should probably go and get it, uh, start learning something about it, see how it works with QLXD. In fact, that was, um, Two months ago, our webinar topic was uh, Wireless Workbench 6. So if you want to learn how to use that, you can also go look for that archived webinar. Again, sure.com slash training. See, we're not going to have to do any webinars at all because everything's going to be archived soon. <laughs> um, and also, it gives you connectivity with the Sure Plus Channels mobile app. Yes, that's right. Sure actually has an iOS mobile app now, which is also a free download from the um from the, uh, the app store, you can get it there. And that allows you to monitor um, all network sure wireless with the exception of UHFR. So QLXD, ULXD, PSM 1000 and Axient can all be monitored and controlled with the sure plus channels app. However, the control aspect aspect of it is an in-app purchase. So it's free to download and be able to monitor things from your iPad or your iPhone. But if you would like to control those devices, you can purchase those. It's a one-time purchase on a per system basis. So you could uh, unlock control for QLXD. And then if you get some Axient later on, you would unlock control for Axient or whatever you, you buy those individually. So uh, that's another really kind of cool thing. We're pretty excited to have uh, to have an app now if you weren't aware that such a thing exists and, uh, and QLXD supports it. Again, uh, you can see um, the ruggedness here. It's an all metal construction on the receiver and the transmitter as well. Another important difference from ULX Professional is that that system had plastic transmitters. QLXD is all metal transmitters. Um, again, a nice, easy to use and read interface. Um, it's a it's a icon based interface, different from ULXD, which has a bitmap interface, which allows kind of you to display any characters you want. You're left with more of a set. Um, look of characters here on QLXD. We'll see that in a minute. And as I mentioned earlier, the encryption, which we'll also talk more about in a minute. In fact, we'll talk about it right now. <laughs> uh, so we use the AES-256 encryption standard. Um, and we use that rather than trying to invent our own proprietary encryption scheme. We chose one that's already been validated by the international community. Um, at the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology is uh, has already validated this so that you can rest assured that it's pretty much an, an unbreakable uh, encryption key. Every, every time you engage encryption on a receiver, a unique 256-bit key is generated. And when you IR sync a transmitter to that receiver, it picks up that encrypted signal and and that transmitter is now the only transmitting device in the world that will open up that receiver and allow it to pass audio. And this receiver is the only receiver in the world that will be able to pick up the signal coming from that transmitter and give you meaningful audio from it. So it's a, it's a really um, strong encryption method. We use it on ULXD, we use it on Microflex Wireless, and now it's been rolled into, into, into QLXD too. So here's uh, uh, the components. Again, it's a body pack or handheld type system. Those are the transmitter options available. And again, the single half rack style metal receiver. Here's a better look at it here. Again, you can get a nice look at that bitmap display. You've got your, by the audio uh, indicator, you've got your gain adjustment uh, up and down arrows there for system gain, which we'll also talk more about in a minute. A menu button, an enter button, and an IR sync button. So pretty straight ahead interface here. But let's take a closer look at what we mean by having a, an icon-based um, display versus the bitmap. So right now you're kind of seeing a lot of these icons lit up. And so, you know, rather than having to dig through a bunch of menus to find the particular feature that you want to adjust or parameter you want to adjust, pushing the menu button just steps through the different icons on the screen to show you what you can adjust. So we'll take a look at that here. You can see as the my finger pushes the menu button, the first thing you can do is go to scan channel mode. You can manually adjust the group, manually set the channel, set locks for different parameters on the receiver, turn encryption on and off, or set the frequency directly if you're programming by frequency. 
And then the final menu push takes you back to the home screen again. So it's pretty easy to step through and get right to the features that you want. And then there is a more advanced menu you can get to by hitting enter and then menu. It'll take you to the advanced level where you can do things like manually set IP addresses and some of the other little bit more, uh, like I said, advanced things that you might want to do. But that's pretty much how you use the system. There's not a whole lot to have to think about. You can you can get to what you want to get to by using the menu buttons. And again, adjusting audio gain is available right there on the home screen again, just by using these uh, up and down buttons here. Now we're looking at the back panel. Again, the most significant feature to note here is the presence of that Ethernet jack, uh, which again will give you wireless workbench connectivity, sure plus channels, mobile app uh, connectivity, and uh, also the ability to do something called a network scan. Now, before I get to that, I just want to do mention, you can see it says that the system includes detachable half-wave antennas. The half-wave antennas are suitable for remote mounting, so that's a nice thing to get right out of the box. You don't need to order any different antennas. However, for long cable runs where you might need an amplified antenna, or, or, or some inline amplification, it's worth pointing out that the antenna jacks here do not have DC bias voltage that is necessary to power those, those accessories. If, again, if you're using these with antenna distribution like the UA844 or something to distribute the signal to different receivers, then don't worry about it because the distro will handle powering those amplifiers. But in a single receiver application, if you do need powered accessories, you would want to add in a bias T like the sure UA bias T, that's actually a part number, UA bias T, um, which you can put in line there to add, uh, add some additional uh, 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 voltage to power those, those amplifiers. So subtle difference there, but let's come back to network scan. As I mentioned earlier, the receiver can scan and find a clear frequency for you. It's very easy to do uh, in a single receiver application. You just hit the menu button till scan starts flashing, hit enter, and it'll go and find a clear channel and set it. And then you IR sync your receiver, it tells I mean, your transmitter, and it tells you good. And there we go. We've got RF, we've got audio, and we're ready to move on. So that's a single system application. And again, uh, the the concept of scan channel is not necessarily new. Um, ULX had it, and ULX also had something called group scan, where you could have the receiver scan through a bunch of different groups and find the best group that you should use for all of your wireless systems. And then if you had 20 receivers, then you had to go back and manually set each receiver to that group and then do a channel scan on each individual receiver um, to find a clear frequency for that receiver. And all that manual labor was necessary because ULX wasn't networkable. The system didn't have any way to communicate. So scan channel was a really cool feature at the time, but uh, uh, just having that basic scan channel seems a little uh, quaint these days. So now, because QLXD is networkable, you can connect multiple receivers together on the same Ethernet network, uh, as shown here with two receivers that you see this little three box icon that now shows up in the split in the display. That's how we know that our receivers are networked together. Now, when your receivers are networked together, that's all you have to do is do a network scan. And the network scan, one receiver will scan and find frequencies within the chosen group for all of your networked receivers that are in the same frequency band. So these are both H50s. So if you watch this little video now, when I hit the menu button, you'll see scan channel, but then the second button push brings me to network scan. And then I hit enter and it does a scan. And now all the receivers that are also flashing network scan mean they're waiting to get a new frequency. And then when I push the enter button, everybody gets a new frequency and that's it. So again, because these are networked together, I could have 20 of them. And if they're all in the same network and they're all in the same frequency band, hit menu two times to get to network scan, hit enter, it does a scan, hit enter again, and all your receivers get clear channels. That's it. It's it's that simple. I mean, that that's such a time saver compared to the other, other ways of doing it with non-network receivers. That's a, well, it's a good argument for making sure you do networking. I remember when we first introduced UHFR, which was our first networkable sure wireless, a lot of people didn't even bother networking them together because they said, oh, I'm not using a computer with this. I'm not using wireless workbench. I don't need to network them. Well, actually, you don't even need to be using a computer. If you network them together, you can take advantage of this really fast scanning capability. Now, QLXD doesn't have the group scan functionality, but when you've got 60 possible channels within a given group, it's not quite as crucial to make sure you're picking the right group. ULX only had 20 channels per group. So, you know, if you're trying to use the maximum number of systems, you really had to, um, you know, 
to, to stress about which group you were using, which you could, again, do a group scan or consult sure.com slash frequency. But with this system, pick a group, do a network scan. If it doesn't find enough clear frequencies, pick a different group. You saw it takes, you know, 10 seconds or less to do a scan there. So um, through trial and error, you can do that. Or you can uh, you can always visit sure.com slash frequency, enter your zip code, and it'll give you the group that we think might be the best for your given zip code. But scanning, I can't, I can't stress enough how important it is to get used to doing the scan. We still get a lot of phone calls from people who say, I want to know what channels to use for my wireless. I'll say the wireless has a scan. You should use the scan. No, I just want you to tell me. Well, I'm going to consult the database, right? The database is more or less accurate based on information we get from the FCC, but the receiver is in the room where you're going to use the wireless. Let the receiver pick the channels that it wants to use because it knows better than we do sitting here in Niles, Illinois, what the clear channels in Pasadena, California are. So use the scan, use the network scan, makes your life a lot easier. You can also see here that we have a new, um, new rack mounting implementation for these. Um, the the Achilles heel of any half rack receiver is that when you put two of them together to try and make one 19 inch rack space device, that uh, that part where they join together in the middle can sometimes be a weak weak link. And if you've got a whole bunch of receivers all racked up together, you might start experiencing some sag in the middle of the rack there as these things weigh each other down. QLXD will not have that problem because now each receiver includes one of these interlocking panels with each receiver. And so you get one. So if you buy two systems, you basically get everything you need to rack two receivers together in a single rack space. Two of these interlocking panels go together and the receivers bolt to them, holding them together. And then you put on the short rack ears and now you've got something that is fully supported all the way across the bottom. So it will not sag in the middle. And again, all of these accessories are included with the system. Here's the body pack transmitter, the QLXD1. If you are familiar with ULXD and you're thinking, gee, this looks a lot like a ULXD transmitter, you would be correct. The uh, mechanicals are borrowed from ULXD, so it's pretty much the same thing from that standpoint, still with the detachable uh, quarter wave antennas for quick replacement in the field if necessary, and the locking TA4F input connector, which is compatible with the full range of Sure lavalier headset and ear set microphones. And um, again, a very nice, you know, feature set that's very similar again in look and feel to the to the ULXD system. Again, uh, the audio quality we've kind of already talked about here, but something that's kind of worth noting is the fact that just like ULXD, and I'll mention this for people who aren't familiar with ULXD, there is no gain control on the transmitters in QLXD. The gain is actually the there's a we have a proprietary gain ranging system on the transmitter inputs that allows the uh, the transmitter to essentially always be op operating in its sort of um, optimal gain range, depending on what sort of signal levels are coming into it, so that the user doesn't have to make any adjustments there. So all of your system gain is handled by these gain buttons on the receiver. So if you see that you're overloading your signal, your audio signal, and you're seeing a red light there, you would basically just hit the down arrow and reduce your gain to get rid of the clipping. Or if you're not seeing enough deflection on the audio meter and you'd like a little more soup, then you would hit the up arrow and bring the audio gain up to a usable level. So you're setting the system gain on the receiver. And that's an important difference from the analog systems where the the volume control on the receiver is basically just more of an attenuator where you typically run it full open unless you're clipping the next thing down the line, your mixer, and you need to bring it down. Here, if you just automatically crank this gain up to the highest level, you'll probably be clipping and you'll see the red there, but you can just go and back it down without the need to go get the transmitter back from the performer and try and you know interrupt the performance to make a gain adjustment. You don't have to do it. And this is, it's a new concept. And, you know, when we first introduced it on ULXD, some people that had been using wireless for a while were understandably nervous about it because it's like, I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I don't know. I work with some pretty loud singers. And and uh, uh, in the two years or so more that ULXD has been available, um, boy, I don't know if we've gotten even one call of someone saying, well, this gain ranging thing isn't working out for me. You know, it's just, it's a pretty straight up system that, uh, that works, works well. So, um, again, you don't have to worry about it. Just make your gain adjustments at the receiver. Here's the handheld transmitter, same interchangeable, um, the head design that we've had on all of our other wireless, or should I say most of our other wireless. And, uh, you can see all of these heads are available 
on the QLXD up to and including the KSM9 and KSM9HS uh, premium uh, condenser microphones there. So uh, again, all metal construction. Uh, these typically work on AA batteries. That's what's included with the system. Um, but you do have the option of using the Shure SB900 lithium ion rechargeable battery. So it's an, it, it'll work with either one. Again, AA alkalines are what's included. Uh, however, in, in any case, no matter which battery you're using, you definitely get better battery life than you did on the, on the, on the analog systems. Um, up to nine hours of continuous use on the AA's. And if you're using the SB900, 10 hours of continuous use, actually, uh, probably even more than 10 hours. I just used a, I just personally used a QLXD system over the weekend and I put in a fully charged battery and it said 10 hours and 45 minutes, I think when I put it in. So you might even get slightly more than 10 hours, but anyway, long runtime that is reported in hours and minutes. You might've caught that in the LCD display when we were looking at it earlier, that it not only shows you bars that look like a little battery and how much time is left, but it shows you five hours and 45 minutes or 10 hours or, you know, 35, 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you know, whatever it happens to be, it's accurate to within about 15 minutes. And that's, that's the best, the best uh, comfort, I guess, security blanket you could ask for from a battery in a wireless system is to know exactly how much time you have left with the bars. It's always like, well, it went from two bars to one bar. I don't know what that means. I guess I should probably put new batteries in now because I don't want to take a chance. Now you you can see exactly what's there. And then there are plenty of different charging options available for the SB900. Um, and uh, I think about a year ago, we did actually a webinar on rechargeable batteries, um, but there's been some new charging options that have come out since then. So if you watch that webinar, it is slightly out of date, but here you can see uh, we have a one-up charger now pictured on the far left. So if you just have one system with one SB900, we have an option for you to charge that battery. Uh, the SBC200 pictured here is the docking charger. So all of these transmitters have external uh, charging contacts on them, which means that you can charge these transmitters in the SBC 200 without even having to take the battery out. You just drop the whole thing in there. You don't even have to turn the transmitter off. If you drop it in the charger, it turns itself off, charges the battery. When you're ready to go, take it out. It's already turned on and you're in business. And the cool thing about these two is you can actually string up to four of these together. And so charge eight transmitters or batteries directly off of a single power supply, which is pretty neat. The uh, third one in the row here is a two-up charger that slots into the AXT900 charging frame. That's the uh, rack mount charger for the Axiom series. So if you needed to charge some SB, um, uh, SB900 batteries, you can um, do that in this charging frame with the Axiom charger. And then finally, the SBC800, which is an eight-bay charger for batteries only. So if you want docking charging, you have to use the SBC200. Uh, if you don't care, if you want, if you're willing to take the battery out of the transmitter, then you have all of these other options as well. But it's a really great battery, really long life, longer runtime than you even get with the alkalines. Um, pretty good deal all the way around. But again, that's an add-on accessory from Q with QLXD. It is not included. So to try and kind of sum it up here, again, we've already talked about you know the digital wireless audio is just a really good sounding wireless mic system. It is the best way to get a good sounding wireless system. Um, and uh, that also gives you the increased dynamic range. Again, 120 versus 100, 120 versus 100 dB of dynamic range with no adjustment needed on the transmitter. Your, all your system gain is handled at the receiver. And really good RF specs. Again, a 64 megahertz tuning range, which again, in the more crowded RF spectrum where there's going to be fewer open channels, you want what we always tell people when they say, what should I do? I need to buy a new wireless, buy one with a wide tuning range that gives you the most options for getting to clear frequencies. And I should mention, I forgot to mention earlier, the QLXD uses, at least in the US, uses the same tuning bands that ULXD does. So the G50, H50, J50, and L50 bands, um, again, are identical between QLXD and ULXD. Spectral efficiency is huge, 17 compatible systems per 6 megahertz TV channel. Uh, and again, you know, pie in the sky number, 60 compatible frequencies per band, AES-256 encryption, um, and again, the great uh, rechargeable power options that we just went over. Here's all the different mic options that you can get. Again, there's lots of configurations, too many to go over here, but if you consult the Sure website or your Sure price list, uh, you'll be able to see what the different package options are that have this sort of full range of microphone choices. 
So to kind of sum up, I think is again worth kind of looking at, you know, the ways that QLXD is uh, is a, a, a nice replacement for the ULXP. I'll put it that way. Um, actually, in fact, rather than looking at all of this text here, let's just try and simplify it a little bit. Sounds better. <laughs> Longer battery life, networking, wider tuning range, more spectrally efficient, and metal transmitters. I think that's a pretty fairly easy upsell from ULXP to QLXD. Um, and again, actually, actually, it's not really even an upsell. It's it's only slightly more expensive. Um, the fact that ULXP was still using nine volt batteries was the real uh, the real kicker there. I mean, that was like the only wireless left in our lineup that still used a nine volt. And try to even, I mean, if you're in an emergency, you try to find them at a store, and you do, they're like five bucks each. So nine volts are not really such a good idea. So even if you're not using our rechargeable option, the fact that that QLXT uses double A's is a good thing in and of itself. So. Um, so lots of, lots of good reasons there. I think it's also worth looking at QLXD versus ULXD, which again is a, is a step up the ladder. Um, but there's a lot of similarities. And I mean, everything you see on this page here, everything on this chart is where QLXD and ULXD are similar, similar frequency response. The audio specs are the same. The RF specs are the same. They're both have ethernet networking, wireless workbench, encryption, metal, rechargeable batteries, all that good stuff is identical. So why would you buy ULXD? Uh, just to kind of bring it home here, there, there are some differences. Uh, probably one of the most important ones is something called high density mode. It's a feature ULXD has that allows you to use even more wireless mic frequencies in a single TV channel. If 17 isn't enough, you can engage high density mode on ULXD and actually get up to 47 wireless mic compatible channels in one six megahertz TV channel. And the only trade-off is operating range. The audio quality, everything else along those lines stays the same. You just have about 100 feet of range instead of 300 feet. So if you're really looking to maximize your channel count, there's definitely advantage there with the high density mode on ULXD. There's also the ability to get to 20 milliwatts, sort of a high power mode that QLXD doesn't have. Although that's not such a huge deal. I mean, doubling the power doesn't equal doubling the distance of operation. You know, you might, if you're kind of at the end of range and you need just a little bit more to get over that hump, the 20 milliwatts might be helpful. But, you know, in most applications, 10 milliwatts is, is more than enough. Uh, again, the antenna bias thing, which I talked about for powering remote accessories is something ULXD has, QLXD doesn't. If you are looking for a Dante enabled uh, wireless mic receiver, you have to go ULXD and on dual and quad receivers only. You'll notice that in ULXD, you have the option of not only a single half rack receiver, but dual and quad full rack receivers that come equipped with Dante digital audio. So if that's something that's of interest to you, that's where you have to go to get that. Kind of a minor point here, uh, communication across subnets. Again, this is a networking thing. Generally, we all of our wireless mics need to, receivers need to be on the same subnet to communicate with each other or for wireless workbench. However, ULXD does allow you to go across subnets for control string purposes. So for AMX, Crestron, you need to get to devices on a different subnet. You can do that with ULXD. You can't with QLXD. And finally, uh, again, probably the most uh, visually obvious difference is, is the fact that, again, QLXD is the icon-based display, step-through menu design. QLXD has deeper menus that are, you know, in a, in a bit-mapped, fully configurable LCD display, which might seem like a minor point, but when it comes to doing things like setting IP addresses and stuff like that that's real, uh, can be front panel intensive, it's slightly easier to do something like that with QLXD. So, you know, a little bit of user preference there, but it is a difference that's worth pointing out. So that's about uh, the summary of those two systems here. I'm going to toss it back over to Cheryl. Okay, great. Thanks, Gino. Lots of great information. Our next webinar coming up um, at the end of the month is going to be about conferencing and discussion systems. We're going to be joined by Chris Lyons, and he always has a lot of interesting th and important things to tell us. Um, so we'll be discussing conferencing and discussion systems with him later this month. So please join us for that. Um, if you want to receive updates on our webinars or um, join a mailing list so you can be updated on upcoming events, go to shore.com slash subscribe. There'll be an option there to sign up for updates so you can see Stay in the know and know what we're going to be talking about next. 
Um, we're going to push it over to questions now. Um, if you if we don't get to your question and we run out of time, or if you have a question that comes up later in your head, or you have a completely unrelated question, you can always send it to support at sure.com. And one of our brilliant applications engineers will get back to you with a great answer. We also have a very robust FAQ on our page um, that you can also type in questions and that they keep updating. It is a living, growing document. So lots of places to get your, your questions answered. But in the meantime, we're going to answer some questions right now. So question number one, uh, there is a small rental house that's looking to get rid of their, or to, excuse me, to upgrade their SLX to probably ULXD or QLXD. And they're curious to know, will their SLX half rack, or excuse me, half wave antennas, paddle antennas, and antenna distro still work with the QLXD? Yes, great question. QLXD uses all of the same antenna accessories that any of our other UHF wireless mic um, systems do. And that's that's a good question because there's sometimes an assumption that because it's digital that somehow the antennas are different, but it really doesn't matter. The antenna, And you know what this comes from is when DTV uh, first came mm -hmm. out, you go to Radio Shack and they try to sell you like a, a an HDTV antenna. Well, guess what? It's no different than any other antenna. Um, so as far as our digital wireless mic systems go, if they're in the UHF band, they use all the same accessories. All of those accessories, the distro, the um, uh, most of the antenna amps and things are wideband anyway. So the short answer is yes, they will all work fine. They don't need to turn over all that other stuff. They just need to get the new wireless receivers and transmitters. Fantastic. All righty. Question I can actually answer here. Someone asking about the batteries. Will the system report battery life with the AA alkalines? Unfortunately, it will not. Um, the rechargeable batteries that we have, the lithium ion rechargeable batteries, those are smart batteries. So they have a chip in them and that chip is what delivers that information to the transmitter about how much runtime there is. Unfortunately, alkaline batteries are not smart. So they can't really communicate with the transmitter to give it that information. So when you're using double A's, you will still get good battery life, but it will show what's remaining in bars. So you'll see that little battery icon and with the remaining bars of how much power you've got. So that answers that question. Um, does, let's see, does ULXD get us out of wall wart power supplies? Mm, good question. Um, only on the dual and quad receivers. The dual and quad ULXDs are full rack devices with an internal power supply. QLXD and the ULXD single receiver still use the uh, the lump in the line uh, type of power supply. Okay. Good question. All right. I think that's all the questions I have. My question pane is, is empty. So I think that wraps it up. Please join us at the end of the month. Like I said, we'll be discussing conferencing and discussion systems, and we hope to see you then. Have a great day.